In part one here, we are talking about the xy plane. So for the xy plane, it's normal, should be parallel to the z-axis, which means that the normal will be parallel to 0, 0, 1, because 0, 0, 1 is parallel to the z-axis. And it is going to be a plane that is going to pass, be passing through the origin. So I'm going to use the point 0, 0, 0, this dot 0, 0, 1. And this is equal to 0. So now we have the equation of the xy plane in the dot product form. Let's next try to find the equation of the line PQ. So we are given by the question that OP is equal to 4, 4, 3. OQ is given to us as 8, 8 and minus 1. So the line that passes through PQ will be parallel to the vector PQ. And vector PQ, we can go for uh, 8, 8 minus 1, OQ, minus away OP, which is 4, 4, 3. So PQ, vector PQ is going to be equal to 4, 4 and minus 4. And since we just um, are interested in a vector that is going to be parallel to the line that passes through PQ, let's factorize out 4 and we will be using 1, 1, negative 1 as the vector that is going to be parallel to the line that passes through PQ. So for this line, it is going to be passing through either point P or point Q. So I'm going to use either of the position vectors. Let's go for P. So OP, 4, 4, 3 plus lambda of a direction that is parallel to PQ, 1, 1, minus 1. So this is going to be a line, and this line that passes through PQ is going to be, according to the question, is going to be meeting the plane XY, the XY plane. It's going to be meeting the plane at the point R. So since they are intersecting each other, they will be sharing the same R. So since they will be sharing the same R, the position vector R, so I'm going to substitute this into the R of the plane. So by doing that at the point R, I'm going to take this 4, 4, 3 plus lambda of 1, 1, minus 1. So we will take this dot zero zero one this is equal to zero so this is going to be four plus lambda four plus lambda and three minus lambda so we have this dot zero zero one this is equal to zero so evaluating the dot product we have a zero plus zero plus three minus lambda is equal to zero this tells us that lambda here is equal to 3. And this is the value of, value of lambda at the point R on the line that passes through PQ, which means that the position vector of R can be found by 4, 4, 3 plus lambda, which we now know it is 3. So 3 of 1, 1 minus 1. So the position vector of R will be 4 plus 3, 7. 4 plus 3 again, 7. And finally, 3 minus 3, 0. And now we have this plane pi in part 2. And for this plane pi, according to the question, it contains the point R. And we know that the position of point R is 7, 7, 0. And this plane is going to be perpendicular to PQ. So if it is perpendicular to PQ, that means its normal vector is going to be parallel to the vector 1, 1, minus 1. So for this plane pi, the dot product equation is going to be r dot 1, 1, minus 1, the normal vector. This is going to be equal to, I will take a position vector of a point that is lying on pi, and obviously we're going to use the position vector of r. So 7, 7, 0. And this dot 1, 1, minus 1. This gives us a 7 plus 7 minus 0 and this is equal to 14. So in the Cartesian form for the equation of this plane, it is going to be x plus y 
minus z is equal to 14 and we managed to show what the question wants us to show where c that the question is talking about is equal to 14. In part 3 we are supposed to find the acute angle between plane pi and the xy plane. So from the side view we have a scenario that is something like this. So let's say this is plane pi and this is the x y plane. The angle between them Let's go for, the, go for the notation theta. And like what I've explained on Achievers TV theory outline, in order for you to find this angle theta, we can actually reference it back to the angle between the two normal vectors of the planes. So for example, for the plane pi, the normal vector is going to be parallel to 1, 1 minus 1. So we know this is 90 degrees. As for the xy plane, the normal vector is going to be parallel Two, zero, zero, one, and this is also 90 degrees and this time to the xy plane so we know that this angle plus this angle is 90 degrees this angle plus this angle is also 90 degrees that makes this angle here theta so to find the angle that is between the two planes it is the same as finding the angle that is between the two normal vectors so let me take these two vectors 1 1 minus 1 dot 0, 0, 1. And using the dot product equation, this is going to be modulus of 1, 1 minus 1, modulus of 0, 0, 1. Cosine of the angle between them, theta, which is the angle that is between the two planes. And since the question asks for the acute angle, so let's improvise this dot product equation by putting in the modulus here. So for cosine theta, it is going to be this, which is going to be modulus of 0 plus 0 minus 1. So modulus of minus 1 divided by square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. That is square root of 3. And square root of 0 square, 0 square, 1 square. It is going to be square root of 1. So we have cosine theta to be equal to 1 over square root of 3. This tells me that the angle that is between the two planes can be found, the acute angle that is between the two planes. Can be found by doing a cosine inverse of 1 over square root of 3 and my answer is going to be 54.7 degrees. In part 4, we are given the point A. Its position vector is given to us as 1, 1, 0. And we are looking at the vector AR which is going to be OR 7, 7, 0 minus away OA 1, 1, 0. So vector AR is 6, 6, 0. And what we're going to do is to prove that 6, 6, 0 is perpendicular to the line of intersection of plane pi and the xy plane. And if you can just imagine, let's say plane pi is this. So here is, let's say, pi. And for example, here this is the xy plane and the line of intersection between the two planes will be this and in order for us to show that 660 is perpendicular to this line we will next attempt to find a vector that is going to be parallel to this line and for a vector that is parallel to this line we can actually make use of the normal vectors to the plane because for pi let's say the normal vector is this and for the xy plane let's say the normal vector is uh let's say this here so this is going to be perpendicular to the xy plane this is going to be perpendicular to pi and when we cross these two vectors when we cross these two vectors we will actually be getting a vector that is perpendicular to both this vector and this vector at the same time and if you can just visualize and imagine this together with me this vector over here will actually be parallel to the line of intersection between pi and the xy plane. That is why in order for me to find a vector that is parallel to this, I'm going to find this vector and that can be obtained by taking 1, 1, minus 1, the normal vector to pi cross the normal vector to the xy plane, which is 0, 0, 1. So this will be 1 minus 0 and it will be 
minus 1 here and 0, 0, so here will be 0, which means that this vector is going to be parallel to 1 minus 1, 0, and 1 minus 1, 0 will be parallel to the line of intersection between the two planes. So let's do one last verification. If I were to take 6, 6, 0, AR, dot a vector that is going to be parallel to this 1 minus 1 0 when I evaluate this I'm going to be getting a 6 minus 6 plus 0 which is equal to 0 and since that is equal to 0 therefore we can say that the vector AR is perpendicular to the line of intersection between pi and the xy plane and finally part 5 in this part, we are supposed to find the shortest possible distance from point A and its coordinate is 1, 1, 0 to the plane pi. And the plane pi has a dot product equation of 1, 1, minus 1. This is equal to 14. And in order for us to find the shortest possible distance between the point and this plane pi, what we are going to do is to make use of this strategy that we have discussed in our theory outline and that is to first create another plane, I'm going to call it pi a, that is parallel to the plane pi. And what we are going to do is to make use of the formula to, of the distance between two parallel planes to find the distance between point a and the plane pi. So for this pi a over here, since it is parallel to pi, I'm going to make use of the same normal vector which is 1, 1, minus 1. And because it passes through point A, so I'll take 1, 1, 0, dot 1, 1, minus 1. And we will have a 1 plus 1 and a 0. So this is going to be equal to 2, which means that if I were to make use of the distance that is between two parallel planes, applying it here, that will help me to find the shortest possible distance from A to the plane pi because it is going to be the same as the shortest possible distance between these two parallel planes. And I'm going to make use of the formula that will be 2 divided by this, the modulus of the normal vector, minus away for this plane, it is going to be 14, divided by the modulus of its normal vector. So this is going to give us a distance between pi a and pi, which is going to be the distance between a and the plane pi. So this is going to be minus 12 divided by, this will be square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. So we will have a 12 divided by square root of 3, which we can definitely rationalize, which will then give us a 4 square root of 3.